Hey mates, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux on Oracle VirtualBox. Using virtual machine is very convenient due to the fact that you don't need to change anything on your running host operating system like dual boot and etc. As well, it is flexible, secure and easy to install without any hassle. Let's start! Please go to Oracle VirtualBox website and download the last version. Choose Windows Host. When the download is finished, please run the executable file. Follow the wizard with the default options and install the software. When finished, you can close the wizard and run VirtualBox. Let's minimize the VirtualBox window and download Kali Linux OS image file. Please go to the download page on Kali website and choose the bare metal 64-bit installer or the Apple M1 version if you are using Macintosh. Bear in mind that sometimes the server is busy and the download won't be completed. In that case, you can choose the live boot version, 64-bit ISO file image, and it will do the job as well. Also, you can use torrent option. After the file has been downloaded, let's create a virtual machine. Please go back to the virtual box window and choose new. Give your virtual machine a name. Choose the correct type and version. In our case, Linux 64-bit or any other similar Linux distribution type. Choose how much memory you would like to allocate your machine. As long as it's on the green area, it's enough. And the more the merrier. Please create a virtual hard disk. Choose the dynamic allocation option. I will keep the default value for the virtual machine folder path and I will allocate 100 GB to the virtual hard disk we have created. Please don't worry, it will not take 100 GB of a disk space from your main hosting operation system disk, in this case Windows, because we choose the dynamically allocation option when we have created the virtual hard disk. It will use only the amount of space the virtual machine is actually using and allocate more space only if needed up to 100 GB as we configure. Let's click on the setting button under the general tab, then advance, then choose the bidirectional option which allows us to copy and paste between the hosting and the virtual machine. Under the system tab, choose the amount of memory you would like to allocate to the virtual machine. Keep it on the green bar area. The more, the better. Under the processor, you can see by the green bar that 4 CPUs cores is recommended. The display tab we can keep as default for now or add as much memory as we want. Under the storage tab, we can choose the ISO image file the system will boot from. In our case, it's the Kali ISO file we have downloaded already. Keep audio tab as default, unless you don't use it, then you can untick it. Under the network tab, by default, there is only one network card. However, you can add up to four cards to your virtual machine. I recommend for now, leave it as default or not. It works well. You can always change the network card settings in the future to bridge mode or add more cards. The rest of the setting we can leave on default. Side note, the shared folder tab will allow you to choose a folder to share files between the hosting system, Windows in our case, to the virtual machine in Kali in our case. And that's it, we finished with the setting of our virtual machine. And that's the beauty of a virtual machine. Everything is flexible and dynamic. The only limitation is the physical hardware we have. Let's turn on the virtual machine by clicking on the run button. As you can see, it's used the Kali image as a file for the booting procedure. Feel free to close the annoying warning messages that pops up. After the installation wizard has been loaded, choose the graphical install or the second option. It is basically the same. Choose the language, then your location, and your keyboard layout. You can also check your keyboard layout and some special keynotes you have in your own language. Now let the system install all the required files and configuration. It will take a while. Then, now that it's finished, choose the hostname identifier. I leave it as default. As you can see, you can determine whatever name you would like. Set your domain name. I don't have one, therefore I leave it blank, but you can use the domain name you have or your company is using. Choose display name that will show up while using programs that display your name such as emails and etc. over the web. Fill username to login. This is the root user, the super user, to login the system. Please remember it as well, because we're going to use it soon. Choose a strong enough password and remember it to log into the system later on. Choose your time and the location. Now let the system use the entire virtual hard disk we have created. As well, you have the option to create a couple of partitions. 
one for Kali operation system and the other one for the rest of the files for the purpose of performance and security. I will keep everything on one partition in order to keep it simple. Ok, we agree to finish and we know that all the data will be overwritten. Press yes. Next menu, you can choose the desktop environment you would like to have and the tools. I keep it simple and choose default. You can always customize the system as you want after the system has been installed. Let's wait a while for the file to be installed. Choose yes to install the grub bootloader since it is a single operation system and a new installation. And now I will choose the logical drive the system created on our virtual hard drive. You should have only one partition in this menu. Let's wait a bit for the files to be installed. The system is rebooting. Enter your username and password. Good job! Kali operation system is installed successfully. Great job mate! Let's continue. Next step, let's make sure the system is up to date by opening the terminal and get the list of all the Kali packages last versions by running the command sudo apt update and enter your password. Now let's upgrade all the packages to the last version by running the commands sudo space apt space upgrade. The system will download the packages and install them. You might get release notes, just press the keynote Q to continue. Now let's update the kernel's headers. Basically the kernel is the core of the operation system. That is basically the program that's running the core of Linux. Please run the command sudo space apt space installed space linux minus headers minus dollar signed open brackets u name space minus r close brackets. Then choose yes and let it run. You will need to reboot the system in order it will take effect and the kernels will be updated. When finished, please navigate to the Devices tab and click on Insert Guest Edition Image. The image file will be mounted as a CD-ROM on a read-only folder. Let's copy the folder content to a temporary folder at the download directory. Now open the terminal in this location and let's provide running permission by running the command sudo space chmod space 755 and the file name slash vbox linux edition dot run then run the file and the guest edition package will be installed after it finished please shut down your machine wait a moment and turn it again when ubuntu will boot again enter your password and voila! We can scale the window size and change the graphic resolution as we want. Let's check that we can copy and paste text from our hosting machine Windows to Kali and vice versa. Let's open Notepad and copy text from Windows Hosting OS to Kali and the same from Kali to Windows. Grand! It is working. Let's continue. Now let's try drag and drop files from the hosting Windows operation system to Kali. Well, it's working fine and vice versa as well. That's it, your Kali virtual machine is working and running properly. The last thing I would like to do is to take a snapshot of our environment we have created. That in case we will mess up our installation, we will always be able to come back to the correct state of our virtual machine. Let's go to the machine tab and click on take snapshot. It will save the correct state of the machine. And if we will want to go back in the future to the same state, we just need to go to the snapshot option at Oracle Virtual Machine main menu, choose restore and run it. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please click on the like button and share it with your friends if it can be useful for them. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Cheers.